Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a complex expression. We have 1 plus square root of 3i raised to the 15th power. I'll be presenting three methods and one of them will probably be incomplete. Alright, let's start with the first method. For my first method, since I want to raise this to the 15th power, a really high power, I want to start with smaller powers first. Like how about if I square this expression? I get 1 plus 2 root 3i minus 3, which can be written as negative 2 plus 2 root 3i. Awesome. That should kind of give me an idea because if I take out a negative 2, I will be getting 1 minus root 3i. So when I square the z, when I square the z, I got the conjugate of z multiplied by negative 2. So in other words, I can kind of write this as an equation, right? z squared is the same as negative 2 times z bar, z bar being the complex conjugate. 1 plus root 3i and 1 minus root 3i are complex conjugates, okay? And is that going to help me at all? Well, may or may not. But one thing that I want you to notice is whenever you have z squared or any power of z, even z by itself, with z bar on different sides of the equation, one thing that will be helpful is to multiply both sides by z. Because z times z bar is a real number. Make sense? You get the idea? So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by z. So I'm going to multiply by z here and by z here. By the way, it doesn't matter if you write, uh, multiply on the right or left. This gives me z cubed. And these two will actually give me the absolute value of z squared. Right? Okay, great. Now, if you take the absolute value on both sides, we already have an absolute value, but we can take the absolute value one more time, right? Uh, it's going to give us the following. The absolute value of z cubed is going to equal the absolute value of negative 2 times the absolute value of z squared. And what is the right-hand side going to be? First of all, this is going to be the absolute value of z cubed. And this, can I write it as 2 times the absolute value of z squared? And then from here, can I safely say that the absolute value of z is equal to 2? Well, that doesn't really help, does it? Because all that gives me is the absolute value is 2, which I already knew. But anyways, we got to this point, and it's just inconclusive, at least in my opinion. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at a different approach within the first method. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do then. Uh, I took the second power, didn't really help me that much. But I want to do the third power, because I want to get something nice. And when I do the third power, obviously, I'm not going to use just third power. I already know the square. I'll multiply it by the number itself. And the square is negative 2 times 1 minus root 3i. And I multiply by 1 plus root 3i. Remember, these two were conjugates. So that's kind of helpful. And I think the idea here is, even though I kind of came up with this equation, I didn't really get to anything from there. This is the same thing, but it's actually helpful because I do know the product is equal to 2. And if I multiply those together, I feel like something uh, is missing here. Let me double check. Okay. Um, 1 plus, oh, 1 plus, this is going to be 4 actually, sorry. It's going to be absolute value of z squared, which is 4. So then we're going to get uh, negative 8. Great. So this is what, what I was looking for. So something cubed is equal to negative 8. Does that mean that thing is negative 2? No. Because as you know, 1 plus root 3i does not equal to negative 2. But its cube is negative 8, which is kind of interesting, right? Well, everything is possible in the complex world. So here's what I'm going to do with this information. Because 1 plus root 3i to the third power is a real number, I can definitely use that because raising it to higher powers would be fairly easy. So to do the 15th power, I'm going to take this third power, okay, and then raise it to the fifth power because 3 times 5 is equal to 15. Now this is equal to negative 8, so the answer is going to be negative 8 to the fifth power, but negative 8 is negative 2 to the third, so then it's going to become negative 2 to the 15th power. Notice that negative 1 to the 5th power is negative 1. 
So a negative 2 to the 15th power, 2 to the 15th power is 32,768. So the answer is going to be negative 32,768. Make sense? I hope it does. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. For my second method, I want to go ahead and expand this expression. By using the binomial theorem, this is just going to be 1, and then we're going to have 15 choose 1, and then root 3i. I don't have to worry about powers of 1 because they're all going to be 1, and then 15 choose 2, root 3i to the second power, so on and so forth. There's going to be 16 terms, a lot of terms, too crazy, right? But one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that we're going to be getting the conjugate. If I raise the conjugate to the 15th power, I'm going to be getting the same thing but with alternating uh, terms, right? And the alternating terms are actually imaginary, right? So if I add these two things, they're going to cancel out, leaving us with a real number. Well, does that mean anything? Well, the sum of these two things, first of all, is going to be a real number because all the complex terms are going to cancel out, right? And then another thing that I want you to keep in mind is that I can go ahead and multiply these things. And when I do multiply, suppose this is a plus bi and this is a minus bi. By the way, if you take two conjugates and raise them to the same power, they're also going to be conjugates. And that's by the binomial theorem, as you can see here. And the product is going to be a squared plus b squared on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we're going to multiply these two things because we can kind of multiply them under the same power. And then that's just going to be what? 4 to the 15th power because this is 4. So a squared plus b squared is equal to 4 to the 15th power. Does that mean anything? Can I safely say that? Okay, b is going to be 0 so that a can be 2 to the power 15. But that's not the case as you know. Anyways, this is the method that I will, I will leave as incomplete and move on to the third method because the third method is the awesomest in my opinion. Using the polar form of a complex number, first of all notice that the absolute value or modulus is 2. If you take out a 2, you're going to realize that you're getting the sine and cosine of pi over 3, right? Because if you take out 1 half, I mean 2, 1 half and root 3 over 2, those are special numbers. Always remember the sine and cosine, 30s, 60s, 2, 10, so on and so forth. They're in the first quadrant in this case. And if I raise both sides to the 15th power, it's just going to be a piece of cake. Because this is just going to be 2 to the power 15 times e to the power i times 5 pi. But if you take out 4 pi, take out the rotations, you're going to end up with i times pi, which can be written as negative 1. By the way, don't get me wrong, negative 1 can be expressed in infinitely many ways using different arguments. But e to the i pi, e to the i 5 pi, all those have the exact same value, which is negative 1. So the answer will be negative 2 to the power of 15 again, which is negative 32,768. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.